watching America Trends. I'm Mary Burke Godwin, and our next guest is zooming in. She is an international keynote speaker, business consultant, certified high performance coach, and a two time international best selling author. She wrote The Dragon and the Goat The One That Wins is the One You Feed. I like that. Welcome to America Trends, Rebecca Mountain. Hi, thanks for having me. Hi, I'm thrilled to have you here today. So, Rebecca Mountain, your website is rebeccamountain.ca, is that right? That's correct, that's okay. how you find me. Okay, great. So, talk to me about how you got into keynote speaking and coaching and then also writing some books. And I, I, I've got to dive into the dragon and the goat <laughs> after that. <laughs> Um, so a long time ago, or a decade ago, uh, I started a social media company, but about four years ago, even though it was a great company um, and I loved the idea of what I was doing, I didn't love the work. So um, I thought, what do I want to do when I grow up? And the answer was really help people figure out what parts of them are holding them back and help people pull those things apart so that their greatness can kind of naturally scale up. Most people don't get what they want out of life because they're in their own way. If you ask the question, why aren't you where you want to be? What's in your way? There's one answer, me. Me. So now what I do is figure out how to get the me part out of the way. Um, so in it, I was reading that in 2008, you uprooted your life and did a kind of 180. So is that before or after the social media company? It was kind of towards the end of the social media company. The sort of the demise of the social media company came from the great implosion, explosion part of my life in 2008. Um, so I grew up in a cult and uh, from when I was very young, was wow. indoctrinated into it. And in 2008, it was just not making sense anymore. Um, anyway, so through a series of uh, interesting events, which are at the beginning of the Dragon and the Goat book, um, I just pulled myself away from everything and began to rebuild my life from there. Wow, that's fascinating. I could have you on the whole show to talk about your, your history and <laughs> yeah. that. And, you know, I, I've met and talked to and read a lot of books about people that come out of cults and, emer uh, you know, kind of separate themselves from it. And um, it's a fascinating thing. And like you were saying, though, at some point we can talk about the things that happened to us and how they have contributed to where we're at. But then at some point we have to do the work on ourselves and move forward and kind of say, OK, that was then. But now it's up to me, like you were saying, to move forward and create the life that I want to lead. So that led you, I'm assuming, to the dragon and the goat. Very. Yep, it absolutely did, because what I wanted to figure out was um, since leaving the cult 15 years ago, I done a lot of work on reprogramming, on reconditioning, on the negative self-talk. Like I was the queen of self-sabotage mm. and it created a lot of misery. And so what I did when I wrote this book, I started writing it um, last year. I was like, what did I actually do to get from this very scared little girl to where I am right now. And I realized there were two opposing forces. One was the dragon, which is just our, our lizard brain, yeah. um, the, our fight, flight, freeze, but lizard wasn't scary. So I called it a dragon, yeah. way more fun. And, well, and so, you know, just to mention, you know, you talked about those, those, the inner self-talk that we have and I battle it. I know lots of people that battle it. It can be like a dragon. It can be scary. And it can be like, I can't conquer this. It's overwhelming sometimes. So I, I actually love that, <laughs> that phrase yeah. there. Yeah. I actually call our negative self-talk the dragon's voice. Yeah, right. So I, I, we I'm hear the dragon, you know, in, you know, I'm not good enough. I will never get there. People don't like me. No one wants to listen. And so what I realized was that was a well, big part of the problem, but it wasn't the whole problem because the other part, which is the GOAT, which is the acronym for greatest of all time, is we have that in each of us, and yet we hesitate to define it and step into it. We, we do what we feel we're supposed to do. That's how I grew up, do what you're supposed to do. Toe the line, right? mm -hmm. follow the rules. And yet our greatness in us is, is often counter to those rules. We want to do like crazy stuff or even just different things. And yet we feel compelled to you know hold back and you know, do the things that society or our parents or organizations want us to do. And I challenge that by asking you, but 
what is your greatest of all time? And that's kind of how I developed into what I do now as a high performance coach is I help people shrink the dragon and shrink not slay because these big bad emotions and I put them in quotes because there's no such thing to me as bad emotions. There's just all just ways we feel sure. can become our allies, right? Like fear means when you walk to the edge of a cliff, you kind of pull back before, before, you know, you go flying over at the edge. Um, anger is what we use to stand up for ourselves. Guilt and shame help us with our behavior to say, you know what? I could have done better at that. Mm -hmm. And so we shrink those pieces of us into something manageable and useful. I love that. But we allow space for our greatness. And that actually, interestingly, starts with defining what makes you happy. It's mm. a question people don't ask themselves. I love all this. I sw swear I could talk to you for all day. And I want to talk to you about something I read. Uh, in, you know, when you work with people on rebranding, there's a method you mm. use called Epiphany Town. <laughs> so talk to me about this. I, it sounds fascinating. Epiphany Town for me was actually the process of uh, demarcating all of the things that the dragon's voice said to me. So Epiphany Town was recognizing, you know, I would behave in a certain way and I would take a minute kind of go, why am I behaving this way? Why am I thinking this way? And I'm like, wow, you know, I had this big epiphany of because I'm saying this to myself, because I'm believing this about myself. And so Epiphany Town for me was literally going through all of the different ways that I have been holding myself back and having these beautiful moments of clarity to be able to then say, but what am I going to do about that? So mm -hmm. retraining your brain, rethinking, you know, changing the way that we think about ourselves, about others. Often like we're bad for ourselves in terms of our negative self-talk, but we can be equally destructive and making assumptions about what other people think about us or don't the stories think about we tell us. ourselves, right? It's all they stories. Yeah. You right. Got it. It's all stories. So what are some tips? I mean, people can hire you to help them mm -hmm. walk through this stuff and act and also read your book. Um, mm -hmm. and then what are others, what are some, you know, can you give us little quick tips here <laughs> on oh. America trends that people can utilize <laughs> today? Because, you know, when you're talking, I get fired up and then I also think it's so overwhelming to think about all in one breath, you know, and I like how you say it's like to make things smaller, not completely eradicate, but also one step at a time, right? So what are one or two steps that people can use to help slay or tame, shrink tame the, the dragon? dragon. Yeah. Shrink, yeah, it's all those kinds of things. We just can't slay it because it's useful. We need to make right, it useful. Right. So where I get all of my clients to start and I continually bring them back to is emotional regulation. I'm, a, I'm big, right? I'm intense, I'm out there, I'm really expressive, and for most of my life, I've been told, be less than you are. And what emotional gives people permission to be, even if you're not a super you know, big extrovert like myself, is to feel what you're going to feel, but give it more specific names. So for instance, as, as adults, we relegate ourselves to happy, sad, mad. But our other brains, because we have three different brains, we've got the emotion brain, thought, and logic, but our thinking and logic brains don't really know what to do with happy, sad, mad. It's too vague. And so we just kind of roll in it and we're, it's kind of ill-defined. Emotional regulation is to take a minute and go, what exactly am I feeling? Is it disappointment? Is it frustration? Is, is it, it fear? numbness or withdrawal? Is it fear? But what kind of fear? Is right. it an anxious fear <laughs> yeah. or a worry fear, uh -huh. right? So am I scared or am I anxious? There's two different things. And when you give your brain a moment, a beat, just to kind of give more specific language to what you're feeling, your thinking and logic brains click in, and now you can move yourself towards processing those emotions, and finding solutions. So how many times have you said something about, like I'll just use the gym because it's the easiest one. I don't feel like going to the gym. Uh, and if you I don't said that feel this morning. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Me too, I didn't feel like going either. You know, but if you can say, okay, how can I make myself feel like going to the gym? What are some of the feelings that if I could really generate those would help my actions follow suit? then that's the work that can be done, right? So I may not feel like going to the gym,
but I feel like living a long time. Mm. I feel like being able to, you know, walk up and down stairs without pain. I've always had bum knees, right? So going to the gym gives me strength. You know, I feel like playing softball with my friends. So mm -hmm. these are the different thoughts that I, you know, I use, but feelings generate our thoughts, which then create our belief system. So the lens through which we see the world, yeah. positive or negative. And then based on those three very connected things, we will act. Wow. So a lot of people so are like, I don't like where I am. Yeah, it's, it's, it is. People usually start at like hate, working really hard. Yeah. I hate cutting you off, but we're out of time. And I, I, I need to have you back because I need to dive deeper into this. Rebecca Mountain, RebeccaMountain.ca. Um, go read The Dragon and the Goat. Uh, I'm going to read it. I know for sure. Thank you so much, Rebecca. And we'll be right back with more America Trends right after this.